what's going on Facebook, what's up Instagram, what's going on YouTube, what's going on um, every other platform that this is seen on. So my bad that I'm a little bit late today, but I'm excited. You know what I'm saying? I hope y'all Black Friday, I hope your Thanksgiving week and weekend is going to be blessed. I hope your Black Friday, which is today, Freedom Friday. I hope that you're having an amazing uh, week and amazing weekend. So tonight's message, I'm not going to be on here too long, but first I have an announcement really quick before I even start. I wanted to say that I wanted to give this away. This is like a Kindle and it's a, uh, it's a fire with Alexa. So Alexa's on here, you know what I'm saying? It's a Kindle. And basically I just want to kind of give this away, give this away to somebody. So like, basically I'm going to kind of do like a giveaway. The requirement is that you just basically comment on here. You can say amen. You can say, you know what I'm saying? Whatever. You can put the fire emojis. Put the fire emojis for the orange Kindle and then just share this message. What's going on, Tamika? And share this message. And basically, I'm going to look through the comments and then I'm just going to um, give, this away, give this away to somebody. So I'll inbox you and just tell you that, you know what I mean, you were chosen. And then I'll go ahead and send it to you. But so... For people who's just getting on here, this is the Kindle or whatever. So you can watch this from the beginning and you'll see the requirements to be able to get this. But I got to keep it going because some people be watching and be feeling like I take too long to like start. But so first of all, I just want to say that you are blessed because you have God's body. You have God's spirit. You have God's body. You're alive on planet Earth today. So no matter what you're going through, I just want to tell you that. This is a season where you're about to bust through the other side. You're about to have overthrow, not really breakthrough, but you're about to overthrow your situation. Whatever it is that's going wrong in your life, God is about to make that thing right. It doesn't matter how long you've been dealing with it. It doesn't matter what you've been dealing with. It doesn't matter who was talking about you. It doesn't matter, you know what I mean, what you did wrong to get there. God is saying in this season, I want my children to elevate. I want to transform what's going on in my kid's life. I want to be able to um, walk around and reveal my splendor and my majesty and my glory through them. So God is saying he's tired of you being defeated. He's tired of you dealing with that circumstance. And basically he wants to enlighten your situation and he wants to show you what it is that you need to do to get out of that situation. Because a lot of times it's our own fault or sometimes it's somebody else's fault. Either way, God doesn't care. And Jesus is basically saying, listen, it's time for me now to come and start shining through you. So today's message is basically uh, on just me giving you a lot of insight and feedback on how God is about to enlighten your situation. So the first thing, you know, I always or most of the time I like to open up with a definition because I don't just use biblical knowledge, but I use, you know what I mean, just natural knowledge too. So the thing I want to speak on is darkness and light. So darkness is partial or total or the total absence of light. Right. That's what darkness is. To be in darkness means to be partially in darkness or the absence of total, the absence of the total absence of light. Sorry. OK. And then light means this light is the opposite. And I love what light says. Light is a natural agent, which means it's not manufactured. It's not fake. Light is a natural agent that stimulates sight and makes things visible. So the dark. So light darkness is literally the absence of light. And then light is literally the natural substance that makes things visible and makes things able uh, to be comprehended. And the reason I brought that to your attention is because at first John 5, it says this, God is light and in him is no darkness at all. So the reason why you've been stuck in that season, the reason why that thing's been bothering you is because you've been kind of having a subtle darkness over your eyes, almost like a veil where you really couldn't see. And God is saying, because you're choosing me, because you're even watching this right now, because you're here today, he is saying, now I'm about to bring light to that situation. Remember, darkness makes you not be able to see something, something in your life, you're missing it. There's something that's going on that you're missing that you need to catch in order for you to go to the next level. And God is saying, I'm about to come through and shine light because because God is light and in him is no darkness at all. You feel what I'm saying? So I ask that you would share this message. I ask that you would just open your spirit up, open your mind up so that God can enlighten your mind and bring his light to your situation to be able to transform you. So I want to just open up a prayer real fast and pray for you. So Father God, I thank you for every single person on here. I thank you God for no matter what they're going through, Father, I thank you that you just had the answer. I thank you, God, that we all have problems, Lord, but that you're the person with the solution. You're the person with the answer. You're the person to bring the enlightenment, Father. I thank you, Lord, for the people who's already walking in joy, who's already walking in that space, Lord, where they've been delivered and they've been uplifted, Father God, where they're, where they're already operating in over 
overflow and overthrow, Father. But, Dad, I ask that you would comfort the hearts of your people, that you would enlighten their minds and their spirits so that they can be able to understand exactly what it is that you're doing. Okay, so I don't know if you notice or not, but I kind of like uh, consider myself to be a transformational speaker. So a lot of times I tell people things that may be difficult to deal with, but I want to say, you know, the first step to change and the first step to going to the other side is admitting and acknowledging that you have a problem. So no matter where you're at right now in your life, I just want to let you know that it's okay to be truthful with yourself. It's okay to say, listen, I have an issue. I have a problem. God, I need help. You know what I mean? We live in kind of like a proudful, arrogant type of like world and society where we don't like to ask for help. You know what I'm saying? We always be playing it off like I'm blessed. I'm good. And you know what I'm saying? I'm wavy. But meanwhile, inside you be dying. Inside you have depression. Inside you're sick. Inside you're broken. Inside you're addicted. Inside you need help. Inside you're insecure. Inside you're broke. You know what I'm saying? And God sees all of that. And this is what I love about God so much is because he's light and he'll sit on the outskirts and he'll watch you sit in darkness. And he says, until you invite me in, you'll sit up there and you'll be confused on how to get out of it. You'll be confused on how to overcome it. You'll be confused on how to break through. But he says, the minute that you invite me into that dark room, because I am light. See, the thing is, you know, God is light. He doesn't really bring light. He is the light. So he's saying, when you invite me in, I bring my presence in and I illuminate and I enlighten your mind. You know what I mean? So I love how the Bible talks about how Jesus, whenever you get to know Jesus, whenever you get into a relationship with him, especially when it comes to Jews, he removes the veil. There's like a veil over your eyes that's stopping you from being able to see what's going on. So the first thing I want to do is say, acknowledge that you have a problem. I see you, sis. You said me. I struggle asking for help. It's okay. We all sometimes get a little prideful. We don't want to ask for help. But God is saying, listen, humble yourself so that I can exalt you. You want, you want to keep on, you want to say, I want to glow up and this is my year of breakthrough. I'm, a, I'm about to boss up. I'm about to own my business. I'm about to, you know what I mean? I'm about to do this. I'm, this is my year. I'm going to have financial overflow. I'm going to be blessed. I'm going to be healed. And God is saying, you're saying stuff that's good with your mind. I mean, with your mouth. Remember last week I spoke about how sometimes we operate in threes. God created us like him, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, right? But he created us like him, man, spirit, and soul, or like body, spirit, and soul. So a lot of times you'll use your body to say the right things, but your soul, which is like your intellect, what you're thinking, and your spirit is not all aligned, which is what stops you from manifesting. But God is saying, if you will align all those things up, then you can manifest it. So a lot of times you're speaking, I'm going to be blessed, maybe blessed. But God is saying, listen, humble yourself first, and then I will exalt you. And humbling yourself doesn't necessarily mean not being conceited or not doing that stuff. That can be that. But humble yourself means ask God for help. Say, God, I'm in darkness. Like, there's something that I'm missing. There's something I can't see. There's something that I need help with. Or if you already know, then you already know. But if you don't, then ask God for that help. And I'm telling you, he's tweaking to help his kids. Like, this is the season where God's like, listen, Marcel, I'm tweaking to help my kids. And I share my life with y'all. Like, I be transparent. I call y'all Facebook family because I just feel like I got to keep it 100 with y'all. If I was the dad today, I lived my legacy of allowing God to shine through me and be humble enough to share my testimony with y'all. So I have to go to God all the time and be like, I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to do that. Like I need help finessing this. And he always comes through because I invite him in. So I'm telling you, invite God into the strongholds and the areas of your life where you need help because he's saying, I am light. And when I step in, I bring my light to that dark area. So I want to speak about how in one season you could be going through something and you feel like you're okay, but then in the next season you struggle with it. A lot of times you might go through a season, right, where you're not drinking or you're not doing anything wrong or your, your faith is on fire or you are feeling good, your health is good, you know what I mean? And then all of a sudden out of nowhere the season shifts and out of nowhere something happens where God is humbling you. God spoke something to me and it was so profound the other day. He said, I, I allow for you to walk through darkness, right? The shadow of darkness, because what you think is really bad, it's really God setting you up for a blessing. So he says that I allow for you to walk through a dark circumstance for the simple fact that that's the only time that you draw close to me. A lot of y'all, if God was to give you everything you wanted, you might still praise him and stuff, but your heart, your lips might be close to him. You might go to church, but your heart will be far from him. But there's something about being broken. There's something about needing God, like tweaking, like I need your help. 
that draws you closer to him. And he is saying, if you would just stop resisting me and if you would come in closer to me or if you're already doing that, continue to seek him. And he's saying you can't lose. You know what I'm saying? He's saying you can't lose. I strategically put you in positions that look like it's too dark, like you can't get out of it. But the only thing you have to do is invite me in and then wait patiently. Some of us, we are praying. We are asking God for help. But then what we don't do is we don't wait patiently. So I just want to tell you, man, that God is saying this is the season where you're about to see him walk through. You're about to see him come and shining up. He's about to come through like like uh like in splendor and majesty that word those words just keep coming to my mind splendor and majesty god is saying i'm lifting my kids up it's time for the devil to see you shine it's time for the people who hated on you to see you shine it's time for your enemies to be able to see how god is blessing you it's time for the people who talked about you to see how god really has his hand in your life and god is saying you don't have to be perfect to receive my blessings i reign on the just and the unjust it doesn't matter if you're right or if you're wrong god is saying listen because you trust me, because you're praying to me, because you humbled yourself to ask me for help, I'm going to just show up on GP. I'm going to just show up on GP because you had the faith to believe me. You had the faith to trust me. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? Like you had the faith to believe that I could really come through and shine that place up and, and turn your situation around. So therefore, I'm going to come through for you. I'm going to come through for you. So hold tight to your faith. Do not allow the devil to make you waver. A lot of times we pray, we ask God for help. And because it's been a couple of days, because it's been a couple of weeks or the devil tried to play with your situation and make one more thing happen to you. Don't give up. Like, don't allow for that to move you. You feel what I'm saying? Continue to be like, no, nah, negative. God, I still trust you. God, I'm still asking you for your help. Or say that you fall short. God, my faith slipped up today. You know what I'm saying? God, I, I wasn't in faith today. God, I, I kind of resisted. I didn't resist, you know what I mean? Whatever temptation or God, like... I was jealous or I lied or I stole whatever it is that you did that you feel like you fell short in. Go to God and keep it real with him. Like, God, I fell short, but I still need your help. And I promise you, he's going to keep showing up because he loves for his kids to just talk to him. This thing is about relationship. This thing is about God saying, I want to help you. I want to see you be lifted up. I want to see you above all your haters. I want to see you above the devil who's tried to oppress you and your generations. You, you didn't, you're not the first one to go through this. Your grandma went through this. Your granddad went through this. Your mom, your dad your cousins, your aunties, your uncles, your whole family went through this. This is just what it's like in this world. We have to go through things, but God says, as you sit in your darkness, but you invite me who is the light into your situation, I'm going to come through and I'm going to light it up. I just want to read to you this definition again. Darkness is this partial or total absence of light, right? And God is light. And this is what it says. Light is this, a natural agent that stimulates sight and makes things visible. So God is saying, no matter how dark your situation is, when I step in that place, I make things visible because 1 John 1, 5 says this, God is light and in him is no darkness at all. Okay, so I wanted to really just put that on your heart and let you know God is about to turn your situation around. If you're watching this right now, that's because God is saying, listen, I heard your prayers or I want you to start praying and asking me for help and I'm turning that situation, that situation around for you right now. But I also want to speak on something too that God just been speaking to my heart and Jesus been talking to me about a lot of people. They feel like, you know, oh, Jesus is coming back today. Jesus is coming back tomorrow. Oh, you better. The world's getting so bad out here. Jesus is coming back. Do you not know Jesus is not coming back until he's until the church gets it together? And I don't mean the building. I mean, his children until God's children wake up and hop into their real identity, hop into their bag, their bag of righteousness, their, their robe. They put on that robe of righteousness. They boss up in the spirit. They start elevating. They start manifesting and they get healed, they get delivered. People come out of jail, people get healed, people jump out of wheelchairs, blind eyes open up. You know what I'm saying? Businesses are started, generational curses are broken. God is saying, until my kids start ruling and reigning into their identity, I'm not coming back nowhere because he said, I'm coming back for, for children, for a body, for a church, for a bride without spot or without blemish. So therefore, we still got spots, bro. We still got blemishes, bro. We're still folding. We're still walking around depressed and sad and oppressed. And God is saying, negative. You think I'm going to let the devil win? I'm not letting the devil win. I'm not coming back to snatch y'all out of that. What I'm going to do is have y'all boss up on the devil, have y'all boss up on this world, have y'all reveal my glory, and then and only then will I come back and snatch you because then and, only, then and only then was I able to express and reveal my splendor and my majesty, and then and only then was I able to be the light and come into darkness and shine, which is basically bringing the kingdom to earth. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. 
His will is to bring his light that's in heaven to earth and light this earth up and light it on fire so that everybody knows there is a God. There's not going to be atheists. There's not going to be people who don't believe because God is going to reveal his glory so much. You're going to have no choice but to believe in God. So he is saying, stop begging me to come to heaven. Stop begging me to die. Stop thinking I'm coming back in a rapture next week. Stop buying these doom and gloom books and start buying these righteous books. Start buying these kingdom books and revealing and learning how to reveal the kingdom on the earth. Because I'm coming back for a children, for a, ch for a child and for a body without spot and blemish. So I like to say this, get your rapture rug, snatch your rapture, your, your rapture rug. You know, you got a rug laid down thinking I'm waiting for the rapture. He's not coming back right now, bro. He's not coming back. And when Jesus tells people that, dad, I'm coming back, like I'm coming soon, his soon is not our soon. It says that a thousand, a thousand years, a thousand years to us is like one day in God's court. So in all actuality, the Bible talks about Jesus dying 2,000 years ago. That's why the time started over. That's why it's the year 2019 and not 5 trillion, however long the earth existed. So in all actuality, God's only been resting for two days. It's only been two days. God is saying, listen, at the end of the day, I am coming to get you. But when I say I'm coming back, I mean I'm coming back to rule the thrones of your heart. I'm coming back to sit on the throne of your heart. I'm coming back to reveal myself through your spirit. I'm not coming back right now to snatch you off the earth. I'm coming back back to reveal my glory on the earth so prepare yourself prepare yourself that means sit quiet in god's in god's space sit quiet and ask god god i need your help this is hard i can't stop smoking cigarettes i can't concentrate long enough to pray i can't sit still long enough to think because my anxiety is getting to me sit still long enough to hear god speak to you so that he can reveal to you and he can bring light remember the whole thing is some of us are walking in darkness and he is saying if you would invite me in i'll transform it and bring light and once i bring light you can display my glory and then he said i'll use you kind of like a mannequin you know how a mannequin sit outside of a store they're swagged up they're bossed up they got on everything that the store wanted to put on, put on them. God is saying, that's what I want to do with you. I want you to reveal my splendor and my majesty. I want to boss you up. I want to lift you up. But first, you got to invite me in so I can get you dressed up, so I can put that robe of righteousness on you. And then when I have you bossed up like that, you'll draw all people. Jesus says, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men to myself. So the closer you get to God, the closer you get to Jesus Christ, the more you step into your identity and your purpose, the more you get bossed up and the more God draws people to you so that they can say, I want what you got. And what you got is Jesus. And then they get Jesus and then now they're bossed up and now they're displaying his glory. And then all of us continue to do that. And guess what happens? At the end of the day, that's whenever Jesus is coming back for a church without spot or without blemish. So. I'm not saying don't go to church because I have a church home. You know what I mean? Shout out to Grace Life. I love my church home. But at the end of the day, you are the church. Your body is the church. Your body is the spirit of God. You feel what I'm saying? So instead of being okay with just going to church on Sundays, be okay with getting in God's presence and allowing God to reveal himself through you. Because remember, darkness is the absence of light. But light is a natural agent that stimulates your sight and makes things be able to be visible to you. So I want to really stress the fact that God is not mad at you. He understands your struggles. He understands your downfalls. He understands his heart sometimes because we're living in a world with an enemy who's trying to push us against, you know what I mean? Push the odds against us, trying to keep us in darkness, trying to keep us secluded. But God is saying, listen, I want to open your eyes up. That darkness is nothing. Like if I turn off these lights that shining on me right now, like my studio lights, it would get dark in here, right? But the good thing about it is the minute I turn off these lights, y'all will be like, I can't see bro no more. Where'd he go? Where'd he go? I can't see where this is at. I couldn't see my computer, my speaker, nothing, right? But the minute I flick that light on, all it takes is for me to say, okay, I'm inviting the light in by turning it on. As soon as I turn it on, all of a sudden, now you can see me. Now you can see my chains. You can see the, the splendor, the majesty. Now you can see God. You can hear me be able to speak to you. Why? Because I invited the light in. So I want to really encourage you to say, man, listen, let God's light shine through you. This is the season where God is saying, I want to transform you. I want to lift you up. This is the, it's 2020 light. Are you serious? How much longer do you feel like God's going to let you be down bad? How much longer do you think God's going to let you walk in darkness? He is saying that I'm not mad at you. I love you. I understand you. I created you, but I created you to reveal my glory. I created you to walk in majesty, to boss up, to walk in your purpose. And some of y'all, you can be jealous of other people and their purpose. Don't get jealous, get in position. I tell people, don't get jealous, get in position. You feel what I'm saying? Because the same thing that they have, you can have too. You don't have to be mad at anybody. And if you're getting in position, don't pay attention to anybody jealous. Because all you got to do is pray for them and ask God to put them in position too. So 
I want to pray us out really quickly, but I also want to say again, don't forget that I want to give this away, which is a Kindle. This is a Kindle with uh with Alexa on it. So, you know, they'd be like, Alexa, play, you know, uh, what, play something, play, you know, <laughs> play something, I don't know, play, you know, I don't know. But basically, you got Alexa on it, and basically what I'm saying is uh, all you have to do is comment the fire emojis and then share this message, and what I'm going to do is find somebody that I want to choose, and then I'm going to just give this to you. I'll get your address and stuff, and I'll ship it to you. So this is just like an early Christmas present for me, and basically, I just want to be a blessing to God's people, and I appreciate my Facebook family. So I want to pray this out, but I want to leave you with one more thing. There's things that your grandma, your ancestors, your dead grandma, your dead granddad. I was talking to my bro E. What's up, E? I see you on here. What's up, Miss Stace? What's up, family? There's there's um uh, there's there's ancestors who's died, right? And a lot of them were in darkness for so long that they weren't able to truly live out their identity and their purpose. And when they get to heaven and they see how big and how good God is, the spirit of God revealed this to me. They asked God, God, even though I didn't fulfill all of my purpose, I still have grandchildren. I still have nieces. I have nephews. I have sons and daughters on the earth. Can you release my purpose in them so that they can still fulfill it through my bloodline that you blessed me with on the earth? And God being so good, what he does is he says yes. And then he puts that impartation in you. And now you have a desire to open up a business, to do nails, to do hair, to do bakery, to open up a daycare. You know what I mean? To be creative and open up uh, to be an interior decorator, to play football, to, you know what I'm saying, be an entertainer, a singer, a dancer, to be a fashion designer, to be a speaker, to be an athlete. Whatever it is that God's putting on your heart, it's like all of a sudden you adopt now their, their, uh, their calling and stuff, but also their reward. So don't be surprised if God gives you five things to do. Like you want to do babysitting, you want to open up a daycare, write a book, you want to start a clothing line, you want to make glasses, you want to do music. Don't despise all those different things or be a chef, all of them. Don't despise God putting different things on your heart. Right now, if you would spend time with him, he'll reveal how you can make all of that work together as one big thing, like one big project. But you got to ask God for his help and he'll teach you how to make all of that work out. But he's saying don't get discouraged when it seems like you have a lot on your plate because he's saying some of that stuff your ancestors asked me to give to you so that they can still so I can still get the glory on the earth and still fulfill their purpose and their calling, too. So a lot of y'all don't even realize you're carrying not just the burdens, but the promises and the rewards of your ancestors and their saying, you know what, I'm going to, because your great grandma prayed every night, every day, I'm going to bless your granddaughter. I'm going to grasp 500 generations down because of your granddad. God is such a faithful God that he doesn't forget his promises. The prayers you prayed in 2010, he's still answering them and willing to answer them right now in 2019 going into 20. So just know that every single thing you prayed about, God hears it. He loves you. And he says all of his promises are yes and amen. So I want to pray for y'all. Father God, I thank you for all my brothers, for all my sisters. I thank you, Jesus, for every single spirit, every single soul that you have on this lab right now, Father. I pray, God, that they would share the message, Lord, so that other people can be transformed and be illuminated by your light. Father, I pray that you would just speak levels of peace and your spirit of peace and your spirit of joy would just overtake them. I pray, God, you would give them a supernatural grace to seek you and to invite you into their life so that you can uh, lighten it up and illuminate it, Father, to bring uh, vision so that they can see what to do, Father. And Lord, I just speak against any type of demonic entities that's trying to bring them down in depression or fear or anxiety or defeat or sickness or anything, Father God, that's just outside of your will. I just pray against it and I release angels from heaven and host of heaven, God, to go and just push back that darkness, Father God, and to be the source of light in their life. Father, I pray that you would allow for this season of just Christmas and all the different things that's happening with family and love, God, that you would just let that be an overflow of your love from heaven. And Father, I pray that you would get the glory out of their life. Let them fulfill their purpose. Let them fulfill uh, the plans that their ancestors prayed to you for, God. And we just stand in agreement with heaven right now. That kingdom come, that will be done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs> I love y'all, man. I appreciate y'all so much. I ask that you would share this message. Um, yeah, like I said, one more time, just for people that might just be jumping on, I want to give this away to somebody. This is like the little Alexa little uh, Kindle. So just put the fire emojis, and then I'll pick somebody, and then next week I'm going to just send it off to somebody. So I love y'all. Amen. I pray that you have a blessed night. All right, peace.